Good evening, Supervisor Steika, members of the board. Appreciate the opportunity to go over this with everyone. Um, originally, we thought about showing you a bunch of uh, images of our uh, streets and their current condition, um, but we thought, you know what, do we really need 30 minutes of that? I think the board is well aware of the conditions of the streets and uh, probably everyone in the room as they drove here to the meeting. So uh, just the, the large one there, just for reference, that's actually Towner Road. Uh, that is one road that uh, we have on the docket to uh, reconstruct, but uh, as you can see, it it's, uh, definitely has some strong need. Uh, the action plan and the citizen survey, as the board's well aware, uh, we have about 10 goals in the township. Uh, goal A uh, really was uh, in conjunction with the Transportation Commission uh, to develop a strategic plan for roads. And essentially, that's why we're before you tonight. Uh, again, Chris, Chris Hackbarth told you um, all the work that they did uh, bringing this forward to the board, and this is really the next step in that process. Um, the other thing we wanted to touch upon is the citizen survey. Uh, that was presented to the board maybe three, four months ago, I believe. Um, and one area that we did not receive high marks on uh, was street repair. Uh, in fact, we're below the national benchmark across the country. Um, so, so the citizens were loud and clear. Roads are a priority for them. So we get this a lot. What are local streets? Um, and it, sometimes it's easier to say what they are not. So again, Grand River, Saginaw Highway, those are state trunk lines. Those are under the jurisdiction of the Michigan Department of Transportation. That's why you'll see MDOT trucks out there doing maintenance and snow plowing, uh, things of that nature. And they're not uh, the larger primary roads like Hagedorn, Okemos, Meridian, the larger roads that most people drive on going to and from work. It's the roads before you get into the neighborhoods. So what's left is, are those neighborhood streets and that's really that 147 miles. And just again, so everyone's clear, Meridian Township has roads in it, but it doesn't have jurisdiction over the roads. So again, the two road agencies that we have in our, our township are MDOT and Ingham County Road Department. Townships essentially gave up their road systems in the early 30s. How are streets funded in Michigan? Again, federal fuel taxes when you, when you go fill up your gas tank and then there's, there's federal taxes and there's Michigan fuel taxes and then of course vehicle registration fees. So when it's time to pay for the new tags, those dollars uh, go to the state of Michigan and then get disseminated um, to the Michigan Department of Transportation, Ingham County, and cities and villages. As you'll see up there, there's no townships. And uh, that's because, again, we, we don't have roads. Townships do not have road, roads in Michigan, so therefore we do not receive any of those dollars directly. Uh, the way we receive money for roads is via the Ingham County Road Department. So how are our local streets funded in Meridian? So essentially, Ingham County has a local match program that equates to about $173,000. That has gone up over the last few years, thanks to some additional revenue that they've received from the state of Michigan. And then our primary form of funding is our dedicated local street millage, which again is less than a quarter mil. Between those two pots of money, we have less than $600,000 to spend on our 147 miles of neighborhood streets. So what's the problem? You got $600,000, right? Well, the reality is of that $600,000, we're re only able to pave one to three miles of streets in the township. Well, everyone can do the math, and that basically means if we were to pave your street today, we probably wouldn't see you for another 50 years. Obviously, our roads aren't gonna last 50 years. As, as uh, some of the residents were saying, the last were paved 30, 40 years ago when the subdivision was built, which is very common. Um, uh, in, in the township, those subdivisions really haven't had any street work done since they were constructed originally. So how do we put together or know what the system looks like? So we have, what's in Michigan, we use a PASER system, which basically is a pavement surface evaluation rating system. And it rates your roads from a 10, which is a, essentially a newly constructed road, all the way to a 1, which is a failed road. And we go around, two, two years ago, 2017, we had our, our neighborhood streets rated. We're actually having it done again this spring. We had to wait till the frost was out of the road so we know what kind of condition they're in. 
And essentially, as we've paved roads between 2017 and last year, we've updated kind of our map. So we got some refined numbers there, kind of a mix. But essentially, 30% of our roads, 30% of that 147 miles are what we considered poor to fail, one to threes. And a lot of communities would tell you, you probably should lump your fours in there. Um, we don't, so again, uh, 30%. If we did that, we'd probably have more than 30%. And again, our average PASER rating is about 4.48. So it's a weighted average. Don't put a lot of stock in it, but it just kind of gives you a snapshot of the overall condition of the network. It really matters what that individual street is. I do have the map, and again, people are welcome to take a look at that uh, when we're done with the presentation. So how did we get here? Essentially, I want to touch a little bit on street asset management. Bottom line is it's cheaper to do treatments to the roads when they're in better condition. Unfortunately, the model has been, and it's not unique to Meridian, essentially construct the road, and then again, wait till it fails, then reconstruct the road, again, let it fail over 25 years, which is really the, the most costly way to maintain roads, um, to maintain roads. The, one of the graphs shows you kind of the life cycle of the road, and again, it just shows you by spending a dollar and keeping that PASER rating high is a better way to go than spending the additional dollars after the life of the road really has, has reached a point where there's a lot of failure in it. And again, the treatments for one, twos, and threes are a lot more expensive than the eights, six, and sevens. So what is the funding need? So based on the PASER rating, we kind of worked backward and said, okay, if we wanted to get all of our roads a condition of good so that we could actually maintain them in the future, how many dollars would be needed to do that? And essentially, what it came up with was $3.5 million is what's needed to reinvest into this network annually for a period of 10 years. So again, right now we have $600,000. What we really need is $3.5 million. This is similar to the analysis that was done by the state of Michigan to determine uh, the governor's road package. So what are the funding options? One is option one is the status quo. We continue to do what we've always done. So for a $300,000 market value home, uh, the taxable value is about half of that. The current cost to a taxpayer per year is $37.19. That's why we only have you know, 440 some thousand dollars to put towards roads because of their total tax bill, they're paying about less than $40 per year. So again, with the county match and the street millage, we have less than $600,000 for roads. That's our current model. We've talked about a little bit uh, previously about bonding. So again, if we need $35 million, which is 3.5 million over 10 years, that would equate to about 1.95 mills. So we would be um, increasing the 0.24 basically to 1.95 to cover those costs. So what would that be to a taxpayer? Same house, same, same house worth $300,000, you'd be looking at $292, less than $300 a year. That's how you would get to that 3.5 million per year. So again, that gives us uh, 3.5 plus the county match. Is that the total amount or is that? Uh, Did you factor in the, the 0.24 going away? So no, so there is, we didn't, that would be for total roads. So whether you wanted to, right, that would include the 0.24. All I know is we're at 2.24, we need to get to 1.95. So the, the increase would actually be less than a 292. Absolutely, right. And then option three, um, if we don't have a, a, a way to get a, a dedicated millage, we'd have to start looking at special assessments, which are commonplace in a lot of townships. Essentially, if the neighborhood has to bring forth a petition to basically pay for the road. Um, as an example of that, we took Shaker Boulevard, which is one of our roads, it's uh, in port of failed condition. We looked at what it would cost to shape and crush that, which is a heavy re rehabilitation. We, we used some, um, some dollars from previous projects. Again, it was about $65,000. And if that was a special assessment, which is what those individual properties would have to pay over a 10 year period, it'd be anywhere from $693 to over $1,000. So how, does, how do the options compare? So again, option one 
if you looked at, I did three addresses, uh, $17.21, they're currently paying $27.19 for our status quo. If we were to do the 1.95 mils to do the bonding, that would jump to 213. And then if we did special assessment based on their frontage in their yard, you're looking at $760. Uh, example two would be 1712. Again, 2569 is what they're currently paying. If we increase the millage, it'd be $202. Or through a special assessment, you'd be looking at $693. So it just shows you the magnitude of, of those costs with those three different options. This is just another way to visually represent that. Obviously, the special assessment is a way to do it, but again, it's usually very costly on the in individual property owners. Essentially, that's the three options, and we're here for questions. Again, we have Mr. Kramer, Mr. Sweats, uh, Mr. Conklin, the Managing Director of the Ingham County Road Department's here. Uh, if the board has questions, and of course, uh, myself and Manager Walsh are here to answer any. Back to the next speaker. Any questions so far? Manager Walsh. I just want to be clear on one point that was raised there. So, um, on the average for the 1.95 mils, it's $290 or, or, or so. Um, if the board chooses to levy this millage and, re and not levy the quarter of a mil out, uh, that's out there now, that number would be approximately $255, $260 per year if the board chooses to go this route with bonding but not levy the current one, stop levying the current one that's approved. Clerk uh, Travis. Thank you. Um, because you gave a good overview of all aspects of roads, there's one other aspect that would be helpful too. Can you point out um, the process when a new development goes in, who pays for the roads and who pays for it after the roads put in? Sure. So there's two ways that's done. Typ typically, it's always done through the developer. As part of the development process, the developer, as part of the construction and the utilities, builds it and then turns those over to the utilities, to the township, and normally the road, if it's a public road, built to the Ingham County standards, to the Ingham County Road Department. They be then become the owner of that road system. Sometimes the developer, though, will not want them to be public roads, and we have several of those developments in the township, and they remain a private road, essentially, and those are uh, paid for through homeowner association fees. Uh, so there's kind of a, a, another class of local streets in, or neighborhood streets in the township. But the original construction, usually borne by the developer, who obviously, when he's selling the homes, that's how he recoups his costs um, and, and the actual sale price of the home, but that's how those are originally built. Ingham County takes over the maintenance of all those roads in the subdivision. For the as public well. roads, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Perry. Mr. Kramer's next. Yeah. Yeah, I think at this point we're going to have Mr. Kramer come up and talk a little bit about how the bonding would actually work. I want to thank uh, Mr. Hackbar and Mr. Perry for making my presentation much easier tonight. They kind of put the bookends and said, make it fit. And I think we've been able to do that for you. Um, I want you to know um, we tend to be very conservative when we approach projects like this. Um, we looked at the township's growth rate over the last several years. It's been extraordinary. Uh, I spoke with your treasurer this afternoon. I think you've historically been three plus a year. Um, we felt it was reasonable to make a conservative assumption of just a 1% growth. Based on that and the targeted millage of 1.95 mils, how much can you raise over the next 10 years? And we calculated that you can raise that millage target approximately 37 million. And how would that money be allocated? Uh, net of issuance expenses and interest cost, uh, you'd have 34 million $200,000 available for project expenditures. Now, while you have these funds, you're going to invest those funds. And over the life of the 10-year program, you're going to earn at least 800000 very conservatively um, uh, $800,000. So that gets us right to where our target is, the $35 million uh, to be spent at three and a half million dollars a year. Now this can be a little bit confusing here. We actually structured the financing with three bond issues. 
and Mr. Sweats can talk about this in more detail, but you have to have the reasonable expectation that you can spend bond proceeds roughly in a three-year period. So we couldn't just issue $35 million of bonds today because you wouldn't be able to move around the township. Every road would be under construction. So the plan was to minimize issuance expenses, issue the bonds in three series, and what we've done here is kind of layered in the debt service of the three series in order to stay within that 1.95 you know, mil target. And I think we've been able to do that, again, very conservatively, safely. And we also assumed that interest rates go up between each series of bonds by 50 basis points. Right now, we're not expecting any more rate increases for the current calendar year. I think, uh, based on the Bloomberg Economic Survey, we're not anticipated to see rate increases uh, until uh, well in uh, to 2020. Uh, but again, we wanted to have, you know, a, at least a conservative approach to this financing, recognizing there may be some change in interest rate over the financing period. If interest rates stay where they are today, your ability to finance more road improvements increases. If interest rates go up higher than anticipated, your ability to finance the, the amount of road improvements will go down. But we wanted to create reasonable expectations that could be met, so. Questions? Mr. Wells, did you have something? So I just want to summarize really quickly. Um, our growth is typically beyond 1%. We're using one to be conservative. Uh, we've put in increased interest rates, again, to be conservative. There would be three bonds. It would be in 2019, 2022, and 2025. They each would generate about 11.6 million. Therefore, we'd have 34.2 million collected. And that would be, and then we would add on the interest that we would accumulate by getting this in one year and not using it right away. The Treasurer's done a, a great assessment, Treasurer DeShane, and has provided that information to all of us that we believe we'll get about $800,000 in additional interest over the time of this bond. Add that to the $34.2 million that we have, we hit $35 million over, over the 10-year uh, period. And also... Just a reminder that, so we're all speaking with the same numbers, the 1.95 mils, the real true number of that would be about 175 or to 17 um, minus the existing millage that we have. So as you're looking at about a net net of where we would end up. That's a summary of bonding if, if the board chooses to go that way. Uh, Treasurer DeChain. Yeah, a question for you about the underwriting of these. I know we have various options, a competitive sale, underwriting, negotiated sale, or direct placement. Have you given any thought as to which route you think would be best for the township? You, you have a lot of options, and I think the first you know, goal was to put together a financing plan that made sense, that conservatively made sense you know, for the township. Um, Baird is a licensed underwriter, municipal finance advisor, and... Uh, direct placement agent. So the goal was was to minimize issuance expenses. And as I shared with you this afternoon, um, banks have been very aggressive buyers of municipal bonds to satisfy their community reinvestment requirements. Um, these will be short three to four year series of bonds um, issued approximately every three years. So the market, uh, the direct placement market would be very strong, you know, for this market. But it really all depends on market conditions at the time of sale. What we like to do is evaluate all of the options available to the township. Uh, and then conceivably, you could sell the bonds in a different fashion from series to series. I think, you know, having options and flexibility is the best thing. Um, you know, today we, we are dealing with kind of a known quantity. We know where interest rates are right now. We don't know where they're gonna be. Um, right now on the short end of the curve, um, you, know, a, uh, you know, a direct placement really wouldn't make sense in today's market. 
the direct placement buyers want a little bit higher yield. Um, so, you know, in a situation like this, a competitive sale or an underwriting uh, or a negotiated underwriting uh, would probably suit the township better. Um, competitive sales tend to have higher uh, issuance expenses. And again, one of the goals was to minimize issuance expenses and preserve as much flexibility. So no decision has been made you know, with the method of sale be reviewed, you know, with uh, the administration uh, and ultimately, you know, with the board. Um, so, uh, again, I could see it changing, you know, over time. Uh, but right now, um, you know, I think you can rule out a direct placement. Uh, the flexibility that's provided by a negotiated sale and the ability to direct the sale of bonds locally is provided by you know a negotiated sale the process is very open uh, and transparent but again you know we weren't really tasked with assessing the method of sale you know at this point uh, again our belief is uh, the more flexibility and the more options you have the better thank you All right, um, I have a question about risk. So is one of the risks that in the next period of between the time of the 2019 bond issue and the 2022 and the 2025 that interest rates could go up? And if they go up, then our, pre then our proceeds would go down then ultimately. Is that that's correct? That's correct. So that's, that's the uncertainty and you provide, try to provide some sort of guidance to see, I mean, trying to estimate obviously what future... Boy, Market. I wish I could, because you'd never see me again. <laughs> so, so what happens? What? I mean, <laughs> what happens if it's if it goes up by just? I know that. I mean, I know that this is all uh, you know calculated formulas. Do you have an idea roughly if it was off by one percent? If interest rates were one percent higher than what was anticipated, what would the impact be on the um, total amount of? Uh, well, the debt service goes, the amount of interest goes up so that then the amount of the proceeds for roads would go down. Well, the, the nice thing is the way that this has been structured, you're staying on the lower end of the curve and um, uh, you're constantly, and that's usually the steepest part of the yield curve. And you're constantly, with short bonds, you're constantly on that shorter end. So you get the full benefit of the yield curve. You need to see short-term rates, you know, increase by a full percentage point. You need to see the Fed in, uh, increase the Fed funds rate by, a, you know, a percent, you know, to see something, you know, like that right. happen. Um, you know, could it happen? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, I have no idea. Um, but again, we wanted to acknowledge that interest rates do change and therefore we wanted to assume that between each series interest rates will rise but the beauty of this you know on the shorter term financings you have the ability to make adjustments in subsequent issues you know interest rates go up and down so you have that flexibility to adjust you know uh, this maybe the second series of bonds you know, because there was a higher than anticipated rate increase. But you can also adjust the third series of bonds if there was a lower than anticipated, you know, uh, interest rate. So again, you just have that flexibility <coughs> to change things. Um, I think if you made the assumption uh, that, um, you know, 1% uh, <coughs> um, you know, is, is $10,000 per year, per average life for every $1 million of bonds issued. So, I mean, I could back into this for you. I'm not that smart on my feet. So, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think you summarized it beautifully that if interest rates go up and stay up, your bonding capacity goes down. Thank you. Uh, clerk, I mean, uh, Treasurer Duchesne. One thing that will assuage higher interest rates is that we will have two-thirds or one-third of this money available every year for short-term investments, um, which is the $800,000 number that he came up with. So that, for example, if the rates did jump, our, the place we can invest it would also have 
a commensurate increase in rates. So that would likely uh, mitigate some of those additional interest costs. We'd have more money to invest back in from the money we reinvested until we needed the money. Any other questions here? What's the next stage of our, pro our presentation, Mr. Perry, or manager? Um, well, that concludes our formal presentation on the different issues, unless you had questions about special assessments or anything like that. That really is it. There's three options. If you want to bond, this is the way we suggest. It's a very conservative approach. I mean, we could have, um, you know, anywhere from hundred to $300,000 more for roads using the same millage rate, not taxing anymore, because our growth exceeds where, where we're putting it at. But that really is it. And now we would turn to the board to find out how you want us to proceed with that information. Okay, board members, don't all jump in at once. Yes, uh, Treasurer. I have a question for Mr. Conklin uh, from the road department. Um, no one knows our road situation better than you do, obviously. Our, our county match comes from you, and you've been an excellent director of our road department. Question for you is if we, we're, we're suddenly now going to, if we were to bond for three and a half million a year for roads, what's the capacity of local road builders or road builders in the state of Michigan to get this work done for us? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, I'm going to start off by admitting to you very freely I'm not a debt type person. Okay, I don't believe in debt. I don't believe in public debt or government debt. Uh, I think it was mentioned that the millage would raise 37 million over 10 years, correct? I'm not understanding what the benefit of the bonding would be. If it raises over the 10 years a little over 3.5 million, what what benefit would there be to the the bonding other than You'd have a cost in the interest and in the issuance, some of which you would recoup from the interest on the investments. I believe in pay as you go. Um, three and a half million a year, I think the industry could absorb. To answer your question, uh, sorry if I'm sharing my opinion on debt issuance, um, but I think I think pay as you go is the way to go. Um, I, you know, if you're going to raise three and a half million a year. Or whether you do the bonding and spend three and a half million a year, I think um, I don't see a difference there. Your existing millage is without bonding; it goes directly. It's a factor. Oh, don't factor into that. Okay. I, I, I again, I don't. I'm an engineer. I don't pretend to be a finance expert. Um, if if you have to do the bonding to avoid some millage cap, then I guess that's what you got to do. But in, to answer your question, could three and a half million worth of road work be done? I, I believe it could. Um, uh, I think it's something that definitely makes sense. I think it was mentioned during one of these other presentations that you wouldn't want to do it all at once anyway. Um, I think you want to feed that into your uh, Pacer road soft modeling and uh, see what that does to your conditions. That bar graph showed what it does to your conditions. Roads are going to age out every 15 to 20 years. And um, I, I think that an investment of that level get, gets to the green on those bar graphs is what you need. And um, I think that the industry can absorb three and a half million worth of road work, uh, particularly if it's um, um, you know let early and engineered properly. And um, <coughs> it's always tough when the funding varies like it has for these last few years, and we let projects late, such as Hazlitt Road was let late last year because some of the funding for it came in rather late. So the industry hopefully is going to expand, but it is a concern we have. I, I don't think three and a half million is something though that couldn't be done. Um, what is our current? Uh, you stay, I wasn't asking him. I'm going to ask oh, him okay. Him. I'm sorry. Okay. So what is our current? Um, how many mills have we uh, already have have spent? So I know we have ten as the max that Meridian Township can um, can authorize. So where are we at right now? That includes the CATA and all the. Or that includes everything. We're actually at 9.01, which you got to take off the debt for the. Debt does not include it in that. It's included, but you don't count that against your um, your bar. So we're actually at uh, net net after the debt for the fire station. We're at 8.8. .8. The most we could levy is 1.2. 
Okay. My second question is, what is the cost um, of a bond proposal? What is the hard cost above and beyond what we would be if we were going to go a different route? Uh, issuance expenses and interest would total $2.8 million over the 10-year period. Again, that's based on the assumptions of current market rates for a AA-plus community um, with interest rates increasing by 50 basis points every three years. Thank you for that. For that, that also would take us to our um, maximum allowable. And if anything comes up over the next... 10 years, we would um, not be able to address that through uh, the millage. And that's one of the things, and it raises a good question, but it's one of the things we look seriously at. Uh, we also looked at taking our county money um, away and doing it ourselves as well was one of the options we looked at. Um, but uh, in, in, in looking at all these uh, uh, things, one of the one things we didn't want to do is we didn't want to make a commitment to our residents that we were going to fix the roads and then not have nearly enough money to do it. And that's where 1.2 mills would get us. It would be like a C minus average at trying to get the job done. So if I can continue. Sure. Okay, right. just so that we're, so the 8.8 .8 is given, including the 0.25 current ro road millage. So if we roll back that 0.25 as well, that would give, that would actually mean there would be 1.45 available up to that maximum of 10, right? So that, 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 sh that shrinks it a little bit closer to the, to the, uh, to the 1.9. Am I correct? That's yes, correct. Okay. And so, um, so the other, uh, the other option, I guess I'd ask Derek too, is we, we all base this on a 10-year plan. What if this was put over a 15-year plan and it was done under a lower millage rate over 15 years? How would that play out? Um, the concern with that is, again, just because, um, well, you, you, it's going to cost more over time. Uh, as, as the roads age out, um, essentially you're just going to be looking at a longer time to pay for those roads. Um, it's complicated because some of the treatments vary too. Again, the reconstructions, we know that you know once it's a one, it's a one. Um, what we really need to get to is is the roads that are our nines, eights, sevens, and sixes. We need an infusion of cash into those as soon as possible so we can preserve those. Um, the longer we let those age out, the more expensive they're going to be over time. So, are you following me with that? Does that so, make sense? So, the route of trying to assess a mill straight up of that would give generate three and a half million dollars a year. Let's just use that as an example. So, so that's not you know that's not generating as much as trying to generate this eleven million dollars up front for the very first bond issuance. Right. So, you're going to have issues where some of your marginal roads, your mid-level roads, they're going to start to drop off and become more expensive over time. So, you really want to try to, ideally, if if the capacity was there, you'd want to spend as much money as you could on your higher-rated roads to get them. Them to a good condition so they're not going to cost you more money over time so that's really why the 10-year plan was identified because that's kind of that sweet spot to get in there it's manageable um, and that, that's really why it was the target thanks thank you uh, Hi, Derek. while you're at it this map that you have the the blow up of um, this is the Pazer data put into our road soft software. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And getting back to a comment made earlier about selling this, if you will, to the township to show, show our residents when their roads get fixed. The road soft software, we can do a model with that. Is that correct? That would show how this 35 million would be spent and when every road on here would be maintained, fixed, or replaced? We would have to do some of that legwork. Uh, the, the software doesn't identify specific roads. It basically tells, it looks at what the PASER rating is and says, okay, if you have X amount of dollars, what you should be doing is, is investing in these types of treatments. So again, going back to that one slide to get everything good, it's, it's probably going to tell us to do the preservation work and to spend most of the money uh, on, on, again, those mid-level roads so we can either get them to eights or keep them uh, at sevens or eights as long as possible. We would actually then have to identify which roads were gonna occur in which year. Again, it can be done, but unfortunately the software just doesn't spit out a list of roads for us. But working with our communications department, do you think it's possible to create an interactive map here that would sh give our residents an estimate of when their road would likely be fixed between now and 2029, for example? Potentially, yes, we could do something along those lines. Thank you. Uh, Director Conklin, 
you. if you're willing. When we've done some of the other, uh, when, when you've done some of the other roads in our township, I'm thinking of, for example, when you redid, uh, was it Cornell a few years, a few years ago? Yeah. Uh, you educated us greatly concerning the differences in terms of the kinds of pavements and how long they lasted, et cetera. And I guess what I'm hearing from uh, Director Perry, or Assistant Manager Perry, is that the, the program he's, he's, he and his staff have come up with is designed in a way that we can, once we get through that 10 years, be keeping things up to status. Does that sound correct to you and your experience as a county director? Well, yeah, I'd, I'd have to see the model in, 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 in more detail. Um, but certainly uh, three and a half million per year will, will help to uh, you know, maintain the roads after that if you keep the millage going. Uh, I, perhaps the, after the first 10 years, the study could be updated. If the millage only lasts for 10 years, you might be able, to, if you got all the roads up to good condition, you might be able to step down a future millage. Uh, that's, that's additional mod modeling you know, that would have to be done to determine that. So it would be a much smaller amount that we'd have to spend if we can get them all up to good in the future to keep them there. Yeah, yeah, certainly if all your roads are in good shape and you perpetually preserve them by doing seal coat treatments or something of that sort, um, you know, that's, that's obviously a lower cost than having to re rehabilitate all of them. Is that something you strive for at the county? Yeah, but we're a long ways out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, uh, Treasurer. A question for the manager. In, in anticipating this expenditure, if the voters approve this millage, be it a bond or otherwise, do you see us having to hire a, a roads director, additional staff, um, additional consultants? What, what kind of additional staffing do you anticipate to manage uh, the significant increase in, in, invest, in road improvements? Uh, none. Um, we have to do with the staff we have. If we make this commitment to our residents, 100% of the revenue that we get in should go into the roads and not an administration. So I believe we can get it done with the staff we have. Um, I don't know if Mr. Perry agrees with that, but since we're not really out doing the uh, work, it's really the bulk of the work is done by the, the, the pavement companies. Um, so I believe we have to get it done with the staff we have. And I wanted to go back to one other point, too, on the, on the millage, just so you all have this, the, right, this the right information so to make your decision on what you want to do. If you did do a millage, if you decided not to bond and you wanted to fully cap us out at 10, you would have um, about 2.5 to 2.6 million a year. So a significant amount if you decided not to bond, but you'd be a million dollars less per year or $10 million overall short of where we need to get to where we want to go. So those are the two figures I wanted you to have. But we're not going to add staffing um, if this millage or if this bond uh, were to be approved. So I would concur with the manager. We have an outstanding uh, Department of Public Works uh, engineering team, and I think uh, I'm more than confident that we could do that, that modeling that we need to do in-house. Again, we're, we wouldn't be taking over the snow plowing or anything like that. We're just identifying the roads that need the work and then working with our partner at the road department uh, to get those contracts in place. Okay. Discussion, uh, board members, any issues you want to bring up or talk amongst ourselves here? Ms. Jackson? I'd like to um, ask about the impacts of um, pushing our um, millage capacity close to 10. So that, that impact, the, the impact goes on past, uh, uh, exists for 10 years, and that kind of hamstrings future uh, administrations and township um, in township government about what they can do based on the conditions that they have at a particular time. Is that correct? Am I understanding that correctly? Exactly. Yeah. If you push it, if you do and you want to raise the two and two and a half million dollars per year, a uh, million dollars short of what we say we need, you would be putting the township at a 10 uh, mills, which would cap us, and there'd be no other ability for 10 years to, um, unless you went two years and found out, well, we can't do roads anymore because this came up. So you stop levying it, you could stop having a millage for roads and then do something different if you went out and voted for a short period of time. But if you go out and have voter approved for 10 years, you're stuck for 10 years. Two and a half, two, two and a half more boards away, I guess, is the way to look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but, 
in that time, you're also having um, other millages that have been um, levied that are falling off um, of their sunset as well. Um, they're, they're coming up to the termination, and then it'll be up to the board whether they want to levy those or not. If something were to come up, and let's say, um, I'll pick, I think land preservation was mentioned earlier by a citizen. When that comes up, the board would decide, we're going to levy that again, or we're going to levy a portion of that. Um, you can't raise it at all because we're at 10, mm -hmm. or you could just levy that existing millage. Pick any millage you want, pathways, fire, police, parks. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes. You're, you're exactly right, Trustee Jackson. You couldn't increase that at all. Uh, just to illuminate maybe a little more on where our current millage is at, about seven and a half, uh, Five, we have five mills of it as our general operating. Now there's a heavy rollback, which has brought it back to 4.162. And then we have another 0 0.6, 0 0.6, which were the uh, mills, which were the police and fire approved in 04. And then we have the uh, 1.483, which was improved in 17 for police and fire. Uh, those are the big ones that are out there. Uh, um, land preservation is a third of a mill. Um, our roads, current roads is 0.25 mills before the heavy rollback. The park millage approved in 2014 is uh, two-thirds of a mill. Uh, and then some very small mills like our, our Cata Ready Ride, 0.2 mills, our Human Services, which is Emerging Cares, 0.2 mills, and uh, Pathways, which is a third of a mill as well. Okay. Yes, uh, Trustee Wasitsky. Uh, question for the Treasurer. The, those individual... Um, topics or points, are any of those going to fall off within those 10 years? So what would we expect any of those to go away within this 10 year moment? I don't have those dates. I can bring them up to the next board meeting. I do know that the land preservation will be up, in, I believe in 2024. Um, and uh, Okay, actually, I, I actually have, uh, if you have what I have. Yeah, I, I do have it right here. Um, the community service millage goes away in 2021, or is up for renewal. The roads is up in 2023. Parks millage is renews in 2025. Uh, the police and fire, which we passed in 2017, is up in 2026. And the pathways is up in 2028. Thank you. They almost all do, yeah. So that's the question? Yes. Anyone else? We're, for Mr. Uh, Opsmer's benefit, we're discussing the proposal, the bonding proposal that we just heard about, or other options. Uh, Clerk Dreyfus. So I do want to <clears throat> just, as a discussion point, clarify that we've had some comments about Hazlitt and Okemos. Um, remember that there is no uh, Hazlitt and Okemos as a legal term. Um, they're both a school district and they're a post office. So there's a third element of the township that hasn't been mentioned, and that's the post office and the school district that's East Lansing, that's located in Meridian Township. So these ratios and these things we're talking about shows, again, that there's concerns on the parts of Hazlitt residents, apparently, about Okemos, but there's also seemingly um, the concerns of some people in the, in the areas that, uh, as we as elected representatives, represent the the western part of the township, that's the East Lansing School District and East Lansing Post Office, they seem to be neglected. And we don't seem to hear them being mentioned in some of these discussions of Hazlitt versus Okemos. There's a third component of the township. We've got to keep that in mind. So we really are, um, if, we, if we start going to that level, we really are we really three distinct entities? There's different considerations of each of the three areas geographically and, and, and possibly um, you can look at them in different ways. But overall, the community is pretty, in some ways, more um, homogeneous than it is separate and, and, and diverse in terms of the things that we're talking about, dividing up the communities into these areas. So I think it's not super helpful, generally, in this conversation to look at Okemos versus Hazlitt versus East Lansing. I think it's better to look at it globally in terms of the whole township as a whole, keeping in mind that any person living in any part of the township obviously would like to see their roads taken care of as a priority. Doesn't matter where you live, if your road is pretty bad, you want it taken care of if you live in Meridian Township. And the road that I live on, 
um, is a particularly horrible road that has yeah. been completely falling apart and actually looks like it's part of a, of a demilitarized zone with actually looks like bomb craters and everything. And those are literally 100 to 200 feet from my house. And they're, um, I've been reporting them repeatedly over the past couple of years. So um, we do want to keep that equity question in mind for the township as a whole for everybody that feels that they have pretty, pretty bad roads universally in their area. I'm sure many people have heard me say during the six, almost seven years I've been on the board, we're one meridian. I mean, that's been the way I've looked at it from the time I first decided to get active in meridian government. We're one meridian. We're not Okemos, Hazlitt, East Lansing, and even Williamston as another portion of our township in terms of mailing address in schools. Uh, we are one meridian. And we all drive on all the roads here. Uh, yeah, you ride, you ride on your neighborhood street more often, but if you visit somebody else, you may be on an East Lansing section or Okemos section or a Williamson section. You know, uh, fixing, fixing the neighborhood streets in all of Meridian is going to benefit all Meridian residents. And as I understand, Mr. Perry, this plan is to get all the streets, not just Hazlitt or Okemos or anywhere else, all of them up to a good rating within 10 years, correct? That is the plan. All 147 miles of those neighborhood streets to a good rating. That and, is our goal. And you would be starting with what? The worst or the best, or how would you be doing that? Actually, again, we'll probably, again, we'll, we'll follow the guys, guidance of the software. And it's probably going to tell us we need to do a lot more preservation work uh, in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so those, those and streets. that would be all over the township? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Sutherland. So I think um, what I'm hearing with preservation that we may not be going after those really yucky roads right away. So uh, wondering if in the beginning, you know, maybe we should go after some of the yucky roads instead of, and I know that's like contrary to what you're saying, preservation is more important. Oh, let me, let but me, let me. how are we going to deal with that? Yeah. You're absolutely spot on. Um, what we're talking about is we've been doing nothing with preservation. What we're saying is a segment of what we bring in needs to be spent on preservation. But I can tell you when I, there's few people in this room, maybe two or three that have input because we keep this, we try to keep the politics out of what roads. I sit at that table every year and look at the road and I can tell you my first instinct, my first responsibility where I think we should spend a huge amount of our money that comes in if this goes forward and gets approved. We should be fixing the roads. A majority of our money should go on the roads that are what you term yucky. Um, the roads that are really, really bad, the roads that are crumbling, they're the ones that need attention first. But we can't forget there needs to be some money spent in the preservation because it makes fiscal sense. But when we bring in three and a half million dollars the first year don't expect 2.5 of that to go on preservation it needs to go in fixing our roads that are crumbling and I, I will hold everyone in this room responsible to make that happen uh, Mr. Opsomer. thank you uh, Derek maybe I missed it but have we put the map up on the overhead projector so that folks here can see the map of the PESA ratings color-coded? We don't have that actually on the presentation itself. This is really um, what we had available for the audience to see. Okay, so well, I would, I would encourage residents to take a look at the map because when, when you're able to look at the legend and look at the PESA rating one to 10, 10, one being a completely degraded road and a 10 being a perfectly new road, uh, you will see that the, the distribution is pretty equitable, unfortunately, across the township. In this case, we don't really want equitable distribution of uh, failing and declining roads, but that's what we have. So this issue is one of the top two reasons why I wanted to run and serve on the board. I don't, have we gone over the number of miles of road? Yes. Condition? Yes. Well, not, yeah. not condition per mile, but yeah, we know there's 147 miles. Yeah. Yeah. But for the, for the public, you know, right now we're looking at anywhere from 275,000 to 375,000, depending on the construction cycle, to repave. That's just intensive resurfacing, not rebuilding a road, but the intensive resurfacing of one mile of road. And today we, by cobbling together about 1 million roughly annually in revenue, uh, we're able to do 2.5 to 3 miles per year out of 147, so when you do the math, it takes you 53 or 50 years, roughly, to get through the entire street cycle, which tells you that you have a pretty systemic problem. 
Um, I appreciate everything that Derek's done. I'm supportive of doing a 1.95 mil bond levy uh, because that gets us the annual revenue that we need to not only bring the roads up to uh, eights through tens, but also do long-term preservation. We haven't done skip uh, patching in a long, long time. Uh, in my streets, we do have uh, crack seal, uh, but it's not sealing any of the cracks anymore. It's you know a decade-old crack seal, and the resin is just kind of sitting there on the street. Um, so I think that that's what uh, uh, Assistant Manager Perry was alluding to. It's getting through and doing crack seal. You know, when you go to a grocery store every year, they have crack seal across their parking lot. Unfortunately, on our roads, we don't do that. So the you know the private entity in that case is making a wise choice to preserve uh, preserve their assets that they've invested in and the infrastructure. And we aren't in a position to do that today. Um, Derek, have we gone over the distribution of the current revenue that we have? Yeah, you missed a good presentation. Okay. <laughs> you can always watch it on TV later. <laughs> so, I don't know where the rest of the board is, but... <laughs> yeah, I think we've yeah, yeah we, we pretty much covered all of that. Yeah. We're at the point where I think we need to uh, reach a consensus as to whether or not we want to proceed in this manner or not. Oh, okay. Go ahead. What are the deadlines? That's all I had. I just, again, was going to... We really are, I guess, looking for some direction. You know, okay. we presented the three options and I'd like to know, I guess, where, where the board is uh, as far yeah. as moving towards. Yeah, I think what would make sense, and um, one of the thoughts that came up about the funding is that right now we've been able to, the board, uh, through their, I think, excellent uh, financial management of this township, has been able to collectively put aside anywhere from three hundred dollars to $600,000 extra in the budget per year. Well, maybe we're not able to keep it up at the 600 level, but maybe it's four hundred or three hundred in the future, and those dollars could go into the, some of the crack ceiling that needs to happen, and majority of all of the funding, the new funding, would go into... Miss Sunland's Yucky Roads. Um, but the other thing is the deadline that you have, you have a meeting coming up on April 23rd and May 9th. And by May 9th, if you plan to go to the August ballot, as the trustee, or, uh, Supervisor Stike had talked about the, the deadline, April 23rd would be um, more discussion if you'd like. And then April not, or May 9th would have to be finalization of, of the language, the uh, ballot language and all that on May 9th because you, the deadline to get on the August ballot through the county clerk is May 14th. So we have two more meetings to finalize this if you wish to move forward. So back to where I was, I think it's time to see if we have a consensus for a direction here. Don't all speak at once. Mr. DeShane. Yes, I would like to see us move forward with this as Trustee Opsomer indicated he is as well. I think this is something that we are hearing from our residents. It's very important to them. At the same time, um, as Mr. Fidua pointed out, we also have to be very prudent about these um, additional millages and, and be aware of the fact that <clears throat> these millages impact our, our, our residents and impact new homes to be purchased and built in the township. So I think we need, need to move forward and discuss the millage and uh, its impact and what we can do with it at our next meeting. Uh, Mr. Asper. Um I'm prepared to support a 1.95 mil uh, bond levy for the road improvements that we need. Um, and I think uh, if language, ballot language were prepared, I would be prepared to act on that at the next meeting uh, next Tuesday. But. Uh, keeping in mind that it appears there was some public comment about the uh, the taxes in the township, I think everybody needs to be mindful that our neighbor to the west uh, in East Lansing has much higher taxes. And really, when you look at the public services and the public commodities in this community, everything is up to the community standards. We don't get a lot of complaints. We just did capital outlay for the park system. Um, and captured a lot of natural resource trust fund and other uh, state and federal grants. Um, we've dealt with our pension and OPEB liabilities, which uh, perhaps only a handful of communities throughout the state have. So for me, this is the only outstanding issue uh, from a financial standpoint that really faces the township. So I would view us in, as being in uh, the best financial health of any community in Michigan uh, with this investment. Um, but then also look at the property values. I think when you look at Lansing neighborhoods where they're, uh, they're not even um, 
they're not even resurfacing. They're just surfacing over the previous asphalt and they're filling in the curb and gutter to this point. Um, that has a precipitous impact on your property value. So this is an investment that will protect and preserve property value and enhance it uh, for many homes that are living on roads with very poor conditions. So for those reasons, uh, I think the prudent choice is to pursue 1.95 mils. Others? Yes, Courtney. Um, I would also support the 1.95 mils. Um, I think. You mean with bonding? With bonding, thank you. Sure. Um, I think the the way it was presented, the bonding is is certainly the more flexible route in um, thinking about potential recessions coming up. I think it's uh, it's certainly the the best option that we have. Um, and increasing taxes is always that's always difficult subject. Um, I did some of the math. It's about $21.25 per month based on the information given to us. So um, when I break it down in my head, I feel like I could potentially afford that. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, Kirk Trifus. I'm leaning towards supporting the uh, 1.95 um, bond proposal, um, but I would like to um, have this on discussion the next time not to go to action because okay. this is the first time this has been presented to the public in the full discussion format, and I'd like to hear if any members of the public will speak out in the next couple of weeks and any media coverage of it and what that might result in. But uh, as it stands right now, I am leaning towards supporting this. Okay. <coughs> Anyone else? Ms. Jackson? Um, I, I too am leaning to, uh, towards supporting the bond at 1.95. And Ms. Sutherland? I would also support. Yeah, and I do. So it uh, sounds like we're, we'll have this on for a discussion and uh, uh, we will definitely get action one way or another by May 9th so that we can get this on the ballot if that's what we're going to do. Mr. Opsomer. And just one final note for the public, uh, and I'm sure it was touched on by Assistant Manager Perry, but we do have a quarter mil uh, road levy today that we would no longer levy. So when you talk about the cost per resident, the median home value here in the township is roughly 200,000. And so a, it would be about 1.7 mils net increase, which would be about $170 a year. Yeah, we did go through that. <laughs> but you're sure right. That is you're out right. There. Yep, yep.